You only get one shot at making a first impression, and it can be hard to get it right. Going in for a handshake when the other person goes for the hug, for example, can lead to a rather awkward hand-to-crotch situation, and likewise a bombastic wrestling-style entrance complete with theme music and pyrotechnics may not go down as well in a boardroom meeting especially when you've accidentally set the boss's hairpiece on fire. Many video games also face the struggle of making the right first impression, and making it appropriate to the type of genre, player, and tone of the game itself. But thankfully, there are plenty who avoid the faux pas hand-to-crotch pitfalls and nail the experience right from the get-go, drawing you in with an opening that's just too damn enticing to put down. Whether it's teasing the end goal, unveiling the big bad of the adventure, foreshadowing the tone of the story to come, or simply providing a balls-to-the-wall action showpiece, these not-so-humble beginnings had us at hello. Let's look at some! I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best opening sequences in video games. Number 10. Metal Gear Solid 3 – Snake Eater Hideo Kojima quite famously loves himself a cutscene. The Metal Gear series is renowned for its cinematic moments and grand story arcs, so it's no surprise that each game has its own memorable introduction. The lesson in underwater espionage from Metal Gear Solid 1, the classic snake bait and switch in 2, that fiery demon whale in 5. Seriously, we all saw that, right? But our nomination has to go to MGS3 Snake Eater, arguably the best standalone entry for newcomers, as you won't need a wiki to understand what an earth is going on. Taking place before the other games, the 1960s Cold War setting and frankly sublime Bond-esque intro music evoke that vintage spy movie feel right from the start. Halo jumping into enemy territory, fighting your way through the jungles, and series staples like kicking people repeatedly all feature in the starting Virtuous Mission. Virtual Mission? No, Snake, Virtuous, damn it, man, pay attention! Or we'll get Kiefer Sutherland on the phone again. But this is still Metal Gear we're talking about, so there's plenty of nonsense too. A young revolver ocelot and his cat noises. <coughs> Magic tricks with swarms of hornets and arch-villain stereotype Colonel Volgin firing a handheld nuke at a Soviet facility. Oh, and you also get chucked off a bridge for good measure. Number 9. Portal 2. We've suffered through dozens, maybe hundreds, of tedious tutorial missions telling us where to look, how to duck, and when to jump. So when a game tries something different, it's refreshingly reinvigorating. Much like uh, this beautiful painting, in fact. This is art. You will hear a buzzer. When you hear the buzzer, stare at the art. Ah, uh, culture. Portal 2 follows in its predecessor's dimensional rifts with a humorous offbeat opening, and quickly presents us with one of the core characters in Wheatley, who is, uh, well, quite literally, a core, an intelligence dampening core to be exact. Stephen Merchant's unmistakable Bristolian tones inform us that we've been in stasis for a while and probably have brain damage. He asks us if we're okay, and we respond by jumping. What you're doing there is jumping. Uh, you just you just jumped. He might have a point. But in fairness, Portal's not known for the chattiness of its protagonist. This bumbling robot's rescue attempt drops us right into the first game's starting chamber, and a nostalgic tour of the now-ruined Aperture Science Enrichment Center prepares us perfectly for the physics-shattering hilarity to follow. Number 8. Call of Duty 4. A hundred million players used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Stoke on Trent, oh yeah, to Stoke on Trent. Historic town on the River Trent. It's a vibrant mix of the great and the good. Before yearly Call of Duty releases rendered us completely insensitive to any excitement for the franchise, there was a time when it brought real innovation to a stagnant, world war obsessed FPS scene. And believe it or not, the single player experience was a huge part of this, you know, back before they threw away the single player entirely. The original Modern Warfare treated us to a buffet of blockbusters moments from a sinking cargo ship to the deadpan gunship massacre and an actual bloody nuke. And you knew what you were getting yourself in for right from the start. Putting you in the shoes of captive President Al Fulani, leader of a fictional Middle Eastern country, you're bundled into a car by thugs who, uh, let's be honest, aren't getting a five-star Uber rating anytime soon. This is no normal opening credits, however, letting us witness firsthand the brutal military coup and the high stakes at play before we reach our final destination. I suppose there's no better way to establish a villainous bad guy than having him execute you within the first five minutes. Number 7. God of War 3 
Our favourite walking personification of rage sure knows how to make an entrance. For his debut outing, Kratos wastes no time in carving himself up some prime cut Hydra meat, and the sequel sees him taking down an animated Colossus of Rhodes, making a mockery of ancient world wonder architects everywhere. God of War 3 had big boots to fill, but somehow they managed to up the ante even further. Riding atop the Titan Gaia, fighting off Poseidon's attempts to ruin your road trip on a warpath to Mount Olympus to confront Zeus himself for being a horror god and subpar father. We don't really need to elaborate on how epic that is, but what makes it sweeter is the culmination of the journey you've taken up to this point, and the friends you've made along the way. And so Kratos finally succeeds in telling off Zeus, and everyone lives happily ever after, right? Well, oh, of course not. It's Greece. God of War uses the tried and true formula of presenting you with a wealth of power at the start and putting you agonizingly close to your end goal before snatching it all away in the cruel throw of a lightning spear. Number 6. Star Wars The Force Unleashed Hello LucasArts developer, I think we should let people play as Darth Vader for the start of our game, Star Wars The Force Unleashed. That sounds like a great idea, fellow LucasArts developer, but won't this spoil the player too much at the start and annoy them when they lose all their powers after the introduction? Um, shut your naysaying face, nerd! There's no way starting a game as Darth Vader could be anything other than incredible. In the Star Wars timeline, The Force Unleashed is set shortly after Episode 3 and the infamous Order 66. And we catch up with little orphan Annie carrying out these orders on the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk. Cue a symphony of garbling roars as you force choke, force throw, and force rodar your way through an army of indigenous furries, unleashing the full fury of the Force. Oh, <laughs> hence the title. Very good. Part tutorial, part playground, controlling the most powerful Sith in the galaxy is an incredible feeling, and the only thing that can stop you is uh, a small child, apparently. Honestly, Anakin, what part of even the younglings didn't you understand? Number 5. Red Dead Redemption 2 Incredibly, it's already been over six months since Rockstar's Western Epic released, and even if, like us, you still haven't managed to complete the marathon that is the game's story and side quests, look, we'll get to it eventually, we're just really busy hunting game right now, almost everyone will have at least experienced the epic intro to Arthur Morgan's adventures. For a game that featured so much traditional Wild West scenery and pre-release trailers, starting in a much colder climate might have caught a few people off guard. Instantly reminiscent of Tarantino's the Hateful Eight were introduced to the gang of reprobates evading the law through a blizzard led by the enigmatic Dutch Vanderlind and his powerful pep talks. Stay strong. Stay with me. We also go on a rescue mission to save Mr. Marston from being Wolf Chow and accidentally burn down a house. Whoops. It's a breathtaking introduction to the fleshed out characters, the harsh environment, and the absolutely stunning visuals. Just look at that snow. We don't think we've ever stared this long at virtual snow before. Beautiful. Number 4. Uncharted 2 We've all been there. You're sitting on a train, the journey dragging on, and you nod off briefly, only to wake up with a feeling of horror, thinking, what if I've missed my stop, and why am I covered in my own blood again? Then the whole train starts lurching, and before you know it, you're hanging on desperately as the carriage teeters over the edge of an abyss. I swear, this happens every Tuesday commute. Bloody TFL! I really should cycle from now on. Poor Nathan Drake rarely gets to enjoy travelling in first-class luxury, and Uncharted 2 is no different, immediately kicking things off in dramatic fashion. And if you think you can sit back and relax in cutscene safety, tucking into your delicious Subway sandwich, think again! Best grab that controller, because you've got to clamber up that broken locomotive yourself, avoiding falling rocks and shoddy craftsmanship just to barely make it to your destination. It's a textbook Uncharted set piece, one that instantly hooked us into an action-packed extravagant that we could barely put down for hours at a time. Oh, damn it. Our meatball marinara's gone cold, Nathan. Can you give Subway a call for us? Number 3. The Last of Us it's a Naughty Dog double whammy, everyone! But from the bombastic cinematic spectacle of Uncharted, we go to the solemn, brooding tones of The Last of Us, and an introductory section that might be one of the most depressing in video game history. We feel like a spoiler warning is relevant, as even though this occurs at the start, it's still something really worth experiencing firsthand. Are you ready? I don't think you are. Set 20 years before the bulk of the game, during the initial mushroom zombie outbreak, you help Joel desperately keep his daughter safe in a tense escape through the ensuing chaos. 
In such a short time, every little detail helps endear you to the relationship between Joel and his daughter Sarah, from the back and forth banter to the note in the birthday card, and all of this makes the final moments of that chapter all the more devastating, hitting us right in our heart testicles. I know, baby, I know. God. Listen to me, I know this hurts. Baby. You're gonna be okay, baby, stay with me. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. All the kudos in the world go to Troy Baker and Hannah Hayes for knocking it out of the park on this one, you monsters. This opening sequence not only stands tall on its own, but stays with us throughout the game, shaping Joel's motives and morals and defining his actions, helping us empathise with a character more than most, and also shows us what the real danger in a zombie apocalypse actually is. Idiots with guns! Number 2. Mass Effect 2 if we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Well, you've gone and jinxed it now, haven't you, Miranda? Commander Shepard was having a lovely time, chilling in the outskirts of the galaxy, when suddenly an unidentified alien ship appears to bust up the party. Shame, really, as you'd think after stopping Saren, saving the Citadel, and having to deal with personality vacuum Caden Alenko that he'd earned himself a break from this madness. But no, ten minutes in, and we've already seen Joker's beloved Normandy ripped apart like tissue paper, with Shepard just about getting everyone to safety before his own brave escape. Oh, he dies. Okay, well, I suppose that's Mass Effect 2 done then. Easy game! Next! Of course, we know that Shepard doesn't really die, managing to survive getting spaced by a simple application of TCP, plasters, and plot armour. But the early death of the protagonist foreshadows the whole tone of the game, building up towards a suicide mission that could see the deaths of a lot more of your favourite characters, depending on your management choices and people skills. Number 1. Bioshock is a man not entitled to a really kick-ass introduction? Well, yes actually, yes he is, and Bioshock delivered quite a good one, to be honest. The fallen underwater utopia of Rapture is one of the most incredible settings in all of gaming, and the first time you set eyes on it is truly unforgettable. Riding a hijacked plane right into the middle of the ocean, this is where the story begins. Swimming up to the surface past the sinking wreckage of the aircraft and emerging into a hellscape of fire and carnage, you swim the only way you can, straight to this conveniently placed lighthouse. It's probably a Starbucks chain, to be fair. They're literally everywhere. Clambering down the opulent entryway, admiring the pseudo-propaganda posters and lovely Art Deco architecture, you get the feeling that something grand is about to happen. Then we're treated to an in-flight movie of Andrew Ryan, introducing the City of Rapture in epic fashion, before the awe-inspiring sunken vista of Rapture stretches out before you. A beautiful world, falling apart under its own lofty goals of objectivism and overrun by genetically mutated junkies. And it's all this genetic mucking about that gives us a taste of the horror elements of of the game. Getting harassed by a splicer as soon as our bathysphere docks, and our first encounter with the terrifying little sister Big Daddy tag team is what nightmares are truly made of. A masterful debut, then, for a game overflowing with outstanding sequences. And that's our list. Narrowing down just ten iconic intros was very difficult, so let us know your favourites that we may have missed in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.